In the first horror movie lighting how-to video, I talked about three-point lighting and showed simple ways to modify that setup to make a horror scene look a bit more interesting. In this video, I wanted to expand upon a specific idea from that video that I think is kind of important and unique to horror movie lighting. The idea is motivated lighting. Or to be more specific, the fact that you don't need motivated lighting in horror movies and just how cool that is for us low-budget filmmakers. So stick around and let me explain. Make sure you stay to the end because I'm also going to show you a couple of cheap things to add to the scene to make it extra badass. Oh, and like always, if you're interested in horror-related content, then subscribe to the channel because there's a lot more on the way. In most movie genres, you as a filmmaker are trying to fool your audience into believing what they are seeing on screen. The things you are capturing in camera need to be believable in order for your audience to enjoy the movie. If something looks off or fake, it can ruin the illusion, taking the viewer out of the scene. For this reason, filmmakers have to be really careful about how a scene is shot and must take meticulous care of each component, including, and maybe most importantly, the lighting. So what does it mean when a light is motivated? Well, to put simply, it means that there's a clear reason why a light would be hitting your actor or set. To understand this point a little bit better, let's get another lovely model and put them in a generic setting. Yeah, I still can't convince an actual model to help me, but let's continue with this ugly bastard like last time. Keep in mind, I'm setting up a pretty sloppy scene here and in a really terrible location. The space is small and there's no room to set up things properly, and our model has no distance between them and the boring back wall. These conditions are less than ideal, but it'll work to understand the overall idea. If we can make this scene look watchable, then imagine what we could do in a real setup. And if you like this kind of video and you want to see me do it in a better location and with slightly better equipment, and hey, maybe even a real human being? I doubt it. <laughs> let me know in the comments and we can set up a real scene using these same principles. Now, if we were filming a drama or a comedy or a romance movie, you would want the light to be motivated and have a reason to be in the scene. For example, if your model was in a room with a window behind them, it would absolutely make perfect sense that a light may be hitting them from the back. We can then hide lights out of the frame, pointing them at the same direction as the natural window light would be, which would be an example of motivated lighting. The light source in your scene or the light hitting your actor makes sense to the viewer because we know that a window would shed light on the back of a subject if they were sitting here in the real world. The additional lighting that we added to the scene is motivated by an actual light source that makes sense to the viewer. Now let's introduce a small practical lamp into the scene. Now it would make sense that we could have a warm light with a more orange color hitting our model on the left side because that light would be motivated by the lamp. We as filmmakers also try to make sure that the color temperature of the light matches the source. Sunlight can be bright white during the day or more orange at twilight. And if the scene takes place at night, the light can be bluish like moonlight, which makes perfect sense. This is motivated lighting in a nutshell, and it's realistic, and for me, sometimes a little bit boring and not quite enough for a horror scene. Now, I mentioned that out of all the genres, horror for some reason is able to break these rules, and you as a filmmaker are able to focus a bit more on making the scene look cool and scary and moody without being bound by motivated lighting. Now, the reason for this genre being able to break the rules might be open to debate, but I think it's because we're already asking the viewer to suspend disbelief in a big way and to accept that monsters and creatures exist and are a part of the world. If they are already willing to believe the crazy stuff they're seeing, then unmotivated lighting is usually not much of a stretch for them to accept. Since we're not bound by motivated lighting, let's have some fun with this horror scene with the goal of making it look cool and interesting without following the rules. Just like in the first video, let's add some light on the back wall to make the scene look a tiny bit better. But why in the world would there be random red lights hitting the wall behind our actor? How would we explain the source of that light to someone who watched the scene and asked where the red lights came from? There's no reason for a light to be hitting the back of the wall. This is an example of an unmotivated light source. It is completely unmotivated, but horror allows us to break some of the rules and have fun with the color and light placement. Horror allows you to change the colors and locations of the light in your scene, so feel free to try out different combinations until you find something that looks creepy. If you aren't comfortable trying crazy setups and these scenes feel a bit too far from reality for you, then you may want to stick a bit closer to motivated lighting and leave the funky colors to the Italian horror masters. If it is too much, you can still get a fun horror scene by using slightly more realistic color combinations and locations. Use bluish light for the backlight, which is motivated by the outside moonlight, and more orange for the side light, which would make sense as most indoor lighting looks orange and warm. This is far better looking than a simple bedroom light, which would make the scene flat and boring. 
Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, we're going to add a few extra things to the scene to make it extra badass. And don't worry, these things are pretty cheap and really easy to pull off. First, let's add the red lights back to the wall. These aren't motivated, but screw it. They look cool and we love to break the rules. Now let's add the warm orange light underneath the model, more like an underlight. Again, this light is no longer motivated by the lamp, but it looks a bit scarier from underneath rather than coming from the side. Now here's where we turn it up to 11. Let's add a bit of texture and effects to the lighting. Take a simple piece of cardboard and some tape. Cut some slits into the cardboard and put it over the blue backlight. Now instead of an overall wash of color hitting the model, the light is textured into an interesting shape, like it's actually coming from the outside of the window and being affected by the window blinds. A large Hollywood film production can actually put huge lights outside the window to get the same effect, but us low budget filmmakers can fake it with a free piece of cardboard that we pull out of the garbage. Okay, let's up it a bit more. Have you ever seen a movie where you could actually see the shafts of light coming through a window? It always looks super creepy and it's actually pretty easy to do on a budget by adding something in the room for the light to bounce off of. For this, we use haze. It's like a thin fog that is barely visible, but adds just enough particles to the air that the light can reflect off of it, making those sweet shafts of spooky light. You can get cans of this stuff for around 20 bucks and even cheaper if you buy in bulk. All right, so let's add one more thing to really make this scene come alive. What horror movie would be complete without lightning? Oh yeah, now it's badass. And guess what? It's really easy to do and can be done without spending too much. You can buy small pocket-sized LED lights that have neat effects like lightning, police sirens, and flickering flames, but they do have their limitations and they're usually relatively expensive. Let's do it with something a bit cheaper and really fun to play with. This is a Morris Perfect Storm box, and it's only 50 bucks. I'll put links in the description for all this stuff if you're interested. The Morris Perfect Storm box is usually for haunted houses or Halloween displays. It's a simple box that you can plug any regular light into and get a lightning effect. This is cool because you can use the lights you already have, or plug it into a power strip and use more than one light. The effect is activated by a microphone, so you can make a loud noise on set with your phone or with your voice, giving your actor something to really react to. Or if you can't make sound on set, it can be triggered by simply tapping the microphone area with your finger. Let's add all these things together and see what we have. So understanding the rules is a very important first step in being able to break them. And I hope this simple horror movie lighting tutorial at the very least motivates you to have fun and try to keep things interesting. Experiment with color combinations. And if you're making a horror movie, you don't need to worry as much about whether or not your colors and locations of your lights are motivated and make sense in reality. With a bit of practice and with the help of some of these lighting extras, you'll find interesting ways to light a horror scene and maybe even be able to work with actual people instead of these ugly bastards. And like always, I will see you in the next video.